All right, we got a hustle, folks. We fell way behind on our first car for today. Should be something from Chevy. Oh, right here. Here she is for Chevrolet. We've got. Uh, should be an HVAC control module. Yeah, controller heater. It says. And then I got the old computer here firing up. She's fired up. Let's go get this Chevrolet and see if I diagnosed it correctly. Didn't bring you guys along with that, but at least you'll find out if I'm a loser. Let's go. What year is this thing? 2014 Chevrolet GMC, rather. And it's got no heat. Oh, look at that. It's lit up today. Let's start this baby. Oh, she just barely started. Hey, look, it's working. And this is the guy's complaint. It works, and then it doesn't. And last time I looked at it, it worked for about three seconds, and then it quit. So let's uh, pull it inside here. Get a battery maintainer on it. See what it does. Turns off, and then on, and then off, and then on. And then finally, we, I mean, we haven't pulled inside, so it only lasts about a minute. Eventually here, it just flips you the bird and says, nope, not today. <laughs> and it's just about where it's at. Keeps doing this little business here. And then, like I said, then it shuts off completely. Got to throw a maintainer on the battery's about spanked in it. Um, so what it was doing, I'll tell you, when I originally brought it in was, was just that. The lights, uh, it seemed to be when it was extremely cold. Uh, today it's about zero out, a little bit below zero the HVAC would work, but only for about a minute or so, and it would start flickering and flashing lights and ultimately quit. You can communicate with it, even when it's not on. Now you can communicate with the buttons. They're a separate module from the heater module, which lives in the passenger side in the glove box behind the HMI module, the human interface module. So it had a code stored in it, essentially stating that the, uh, I'll get the code number, that the five volt reference circuit was no longer being output. But what I noticed is when I looked at scan data, it did not recognize ignition voltage. It was showing the supply voltage for the module only being like four volts. Therefore, the five volt reference, you know, couldn't work. And I checked the five volt reference circuit coming out of it and it was at zero. That feeds all of the actuators, temperature, recirculation, and mode. So the three actuators in this truck run off five volts. So I unplugged them all which were a pain in the ass to get to. The 5 volt reference didn't come back to life. The scan data still didn't change, so I made a call on a module. It, we got power, we got ground, and we have CAN bus going to it, and then we have a LIN bus that goes to the buttons. They all test fine, so therefore it has to be a bad module. So, long story short, the guy said do it. So hopefully I'm right. So we'll come inside here, we'll set this down. I left this in here, why did I leave this in here? Oh, because this was the power ground to communication circuit that I checked uh, to be sure everything's cool. And then let's take, let's just see if I can show you one more time here. We'll flick the old key on here. And oftentimes, like I say, this will work initially. But then within, you know, a minute or so it shuts down. But it just continually has this cycle, kind of works, kind of doesn't. When it does light up, it will ramp up the blower motor which it's not doing now, so. But like I say, this is just the buttons that run over to this module here. This is the HMI module, so this is your human machine interface. And you can see the most data bus on it, so the USB data bus. And then, so, anyhow, I don't have a lot of time, so let's get cranking. I just wanted to bring you guys along, in case I'm wrong, that we can go through and sort this out. I mean, I could be, if I'm, if I'm not right, I don't. So this is your heater control module. This is what runs your heater in these shippy pickups. If this isn't it, I don't know. A good friend of mine always tells myself to ask myself that. He says, well, always ask yourself. If what you think the problem is, isn't the problem, what's your next step? Or he says something, something along those lines. Uh, and so you try to think about that. Like, before you pull the trigger on it, you know, on this module, if that doesn't fix it, what are you gonna do next? You know, have you run all of those tests already? So let's plug this in. We've got downtown brown connector right here. And then 
this thing is in a hell of a spot here folks uh, this also needs to be programmed <laughs> what's up old girl um just to let you know that converters have a 250 dollar core on it yeah i saw that and then did you need a uh, let's see. Yes, that's gonna go with the guy that has the black or the blue Chevy out there when we're all done with it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so what we'll do? So that's plugged in and not programmed. I wonder if it still lights up up here. Let's see. And it does. Look at that. And it's not blinking no more. We're gonna look in service data. I mean. Yeah, because it's acting all stupid because it like just lights up everything. But the good news is it's no longer blinking. So let's look in service data. It just appears to be stuck on now. It's probably because it's not programmed. So let's do that. Let's get after it. Oh, and how do you know that it needs to be programmed? Any GM module that has that little symbol right there on it, it means it needs to be programmed. So to do the programming, we're going to be using our GM uh, MDI-2 and GM TechMind Connect. And we'll plug this little guy in. It should go pretty quick, I'm thinking. At least I'm hoping. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. We'll plug it in. We'll get connected to it. And then I'll, I'll look and see if I can find what code this old one was throwing. See, it's creepy crawling along. Uh, well, we're waiting for that, folks. Uh, free tip for you. If you're working on your Chevrolets uh, and you're wondering when you're looking in scan data, you've, we've all been there where we see this data pit and we're like, well, what the heck does that mean? Or what's it supposed to be? Control module references. This is what you always want to remember working on Chevy. If you're looking in service data, find your control module references. Come down here, find your control module, and then you can get the schematics for it, how to replace it, and then importantly how to program it and set it up or does it need programming so we come down I think it's the K33 module HVAC scan tool information so on mine you know I'm looking like what is the battery voltage pit is that our 5 volt reference is it battery voltage and then tell you you know scan tool displays voltage this is current battery voltage and like I say with our old one it was displaying about 4 volts so um, you know, and, and everything. Like, you know, what is the enhanced defrost switch? You know, on, off, what's it mean? Well, this tells you, you know. Yeah, and you can come down through, and this is for every module on the car. And then the important part is, we can also go through and say, you know, how are we supposed to program this? Uh, HVAC module programming, it tells you not to replace a module unless you're directed to by a bolt-in or a service procedure, connect scan tool, go to SPS or our tech line connect. Um, perform the control module programming, follow on screen instructions, after that clear the codes, you know, boom. And then the setup for the replacement component. If an actuator has been replaced, the following must be performed, actuator calibration. Now in this particular one, we did just replace the module, but I did have one of the actuators off when I was trying to get them unplugged to check the 5 volt reference circuit. I unplugged the temperature module I believe it was a temperature door and the driver's side footwell. I can't get to the connector, I had to take the actuator off. So once this is done, I'm just gonna calibrate the actuators, double check and scan data, and adios. And this was the code we're fixing, the B139503, control module reference voltage, or reference output circuit low voltage. So your reference output is your five volt output out of the module. Okay, we wanna view that later, it's done programming. We're going to clear the codes and then we're going to go through a key cycle and shut the key off wait a few minutes all right we can see the hvac controller is now lit up like a christmas tree and it's no longer flashing then i got to go through the process of trying to get it put back in the dash absolutely ridiculous we're going to log in with a scan tool here we want to go to module diagnostics and then we want to find what was it the k33 module right K33 HVAC control module and there should be uh, recalibration under here control reset functions actuator learn turn ignition on which it is we'll hit continue we're gonna let it do its thing here just to make sure from unhooking that actuator that everything's cool and uh, the programming went through fine took a long time it took probably 10 minutes anyways I would say 
we're gonna let this zippy zap through there. Then I wanna go back through and just poke at some data real quick. I wanna see if we show the five volts and we show battery voltage. So right now we're at 13.9 volts and we should be able to see that on scan data also. All right, roger that. Clear DTCs, continue. We wanna go back and wanna see if there is any code stored in it because we may have stored some codes in it. Uh, no code stored, so that's good. So we're gonna back back out. And then we just wanna take and look at some live data. Uh, maybe, maybe sensor data, system data is probably where I was at. And then, oops, there we go. It's battery voltage, 14 volts. And then we should see ignition voltage, which, on, which they don't show that under the control module references, which I thought was odd. That's at 14 volts. And then, okay, they don't have the five volt reference listed on here. They may not, the sensor data, these were all at zero volts before. No, nope, because those are all just temperature PIDs. Last time I did it, I did it with the um, Altel, so the menus here are a little bit different for me. Okay, maybe it was the counts I was looking at. Yeah, because I don't see, yeah, AC permission, security data, it's not gonna have anything. So maybe the Altel was set a little bit different. I do remember looking at battery and ignition voltage and seeing they were both low and then was setting, you know, obviously was setting this code. So anyhow, I'm good, I'm happy with it. Let's slam it back together. So I'm not trying to gripe people and be a Mr. Pissy Pants about cars and new cars, but I mean, let me, uh, I just gotta open and close this door to shut off the accessory power. There we go. Um, but, uh, you know, cars are getting, and this is old, like I say, this is a 14, so this thing, you know, it's some old technology compared to nowadays in the year 2022. Uh, so that's your HMI module. Um, and I don't mean to be a pissy pants, but it's gonna get to the point where you're not gonna be able to afford to drive your car. If it breaks the average Joe, you know, say a guy just wants a truck. Well, here, you know, here's, I don't know what well, this was, a couple hundred bucks, you gotta program it, you gotta diagnose it. This whole thing for not having heat turned into, like I said, it's like a $400 ordeal by the time you pay a shop to figure out what's wrong with it. Oh, this sucks. Putting this thing back in is a bastard to get in here. It sits up on top of the heater box here. And it has a little plastic strap that holds it in. And uh, you gotta take the bracket loose for the HMI module. And then you just kind of just shove it up in here. Get this thing up out of the way. But I guess what I was saying is, you know, we're gonna we're gonna surpass the stupid level as far as what it's gonna cost the average guy to fix his car, fix his truck. Um, and I feel bad for some of these people because it is just this stupid. You know, we're trying to get it so he's got heat. And, and what choice do you have? I mean, you you have to fix it. I mean, either that or you just got no freaking heat. Uh, I'll show you where this sits here in a minute. But, you know, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's not, it's not my fault, but I'm just trying to sympathize with people here a little, but the fact is, at the end of the day, I gotta get paid too. I mean, it's not cheap to be able to learn and know this stuff and, and to be able to diagnose it, fix it. I mean, there, there's expenses on my end too. And I can't wait to be out of this industry <laughs> because it sucks, but. It is what it is. For right now, I'm gonna keep doing it. And uh, try to keep people on the road, but oftentimes I wish I'd picked a different profession, folks. To be honest with you. Oh, come on. Just hate being the bad guy. But <laughs> come on, baby. You can't get your Freaking fingers in here. I gotta go get a poking apparatus. You stand by. Let me show you. So, can you see? What can you see? You guys can't see crap. Let me, uh, let me wedge us a light up in here. There we go. So, right up there, so you see the black connector and the brown connector. So, this is the glove box area. There's the heater box. And it sets right up on there. 
and it's just held in place with get a pointing apparatus this snap right here this this uh, plastic snap just goes over that clicks down into the heater box right there um, and then the HMI module will sit up in this area so I got her clicked in it's kind of a pain if you got big meat nugget hands to get up in there but we got to get this bracket here I'll show you so there's the bracket for the HMI module it sits in this little groove right there so you got to take that bolt out and then there's a couple bolts one right here and one right here yeah right there and right there so we'll get uh, get them put back in there and get the HMI module slid back in and that just clicks in then this is all glove box stuff this, some of this car stuff's getting a little overwhelming to me folks it's just it's super stuff is super complicated for what it is for what it could be I suppose like this like trying to plug in a USB cable uh, uh, there we go get it whoops hang on you guys still with me this is that HMI module try to get this one plugged in that one's plugged in now we gotta get this little guy over here where she belongs all this so we can have our infotainment yeah baby Remember when a radio just had two knobs? Whoa! Now you guys are out of sight. Oh, how I long for the day of a radio with two knobs <laughs> and a heater with a cable. Whoa! Anything fancy in here we don't need to look at? Nope. No, I can't complain. It pays my bills, but there's oftentimes I wish I chose a different profession. But you just do what you know, but this stuff gets boring, I tell you. Fixing cars can be just monotonous, just one after the next, after the next, the same crap. Anyways, so there's that. Now we can put our glove box back in. Du -du 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 -du. Where is the screw? Anything important here? You can't see, I'll cover it up. Don't wait, look, everybody close your eyes. You guys like to find stuff. All right, I'm putting the screws in it. You guys don't put the screws to me and head in that comment section. The question, the comments, the concerns. Let me know if you long for the days of the old Chevrolet where it didn't cost you an arm and a leg. I just rhymed that whole thing. To uh, fix your HVAC when you could just change a resistor or a blower motor or fix a short or whatever it was. It didn't involve a computer module, let alone two or three of them. So let me know about that in that comment section. When you're down there, subscribe, ring the bell, the questions, the comments, you know what to do. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.